What is up everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to No Life to Metal. It's time for a big edition of... The Mail. That's right, time for The Mail. Unfortunately, this mail will not be a live opening um, because I botched the live video. Uh, don't know how, I must have pushed the button twice, thought it was recording, and it was not. So, <laughs> I have no video footage of me opening the video uh, of the opening up this package live. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you what came in a awesome package from the Headbanging Zulu UK or Steve. If you don't know who the Headbanging Zulu UK is, I will leave a link above in the um, several links you can find below in the description. I'll leave one above you can click on um, so you can get to him. But the Headbanging Zulu UK is another YouTube channel who also shows music, um, heavy metal, hard rock, uh, thrash, death, black a little bit of everything kind of like my channel and um, he sent me this box just out of the blue so uh, anyway I'm gonna get right into it there was CDs 7 inch and 10 inch and 12 inch but I don't know 10 inch um, so I want to get right into it so first of all um, Deep Purple let's see if I can somehow manage to get rid of the glare there you go Deep Purple this is uh, 30 very best of so 30 years of Deep Purple so we've got Hush uh, Black Knight, Speed King, Child in Time, Strange Kind of Woman, Fireball, Demon's Eye, Smoke on the Water, Highway Star, When a Blind Man Cries, Never Before, Woman from Tokyo, Burn, Stormbringer, You Keep on Moving, Perfect Strangers, Ted the Mechanic, and Any Fool Know That. So very cool. Um, 18 tracks, is that what it is? 18 tracks, 30, the very best of Deep Purple. Don't have that compilation so very cool I'll definitely check it out although I mean I know every song on there and know that they're all great so <laughs> it's deep purple what can you say you know um, this is cool though this is Megadeth countdown to extinction live uh, I love countdown to extinction I know it was their, you know it was their version of Metallica's black album everybody says that but it's still a good heavy metal album it's actually more aggressive than the uh, than the black album ever was and um, Frankly, I just think it's a great album. Um, so you have the entire album recorded live on here, as well as live versions of Trust, Hangar 18, Public Enemy, um, She-Wolf, Peace Cells, and Holy Wars, The Punishment Due. So very cool. I like these when they play full album live. Um, kind of takes away the, the studio sheen and gives it a little more aggression, um, gives a little more energy, and it's just, I don't know, kind of a lot of fun. Uh, so there you go. I think it's came out in DVD as well. Uh, I've never seen a DVD. You know, I have a lot of music DVDs. The thing is, I, I rarely ever get to watch them because I just don't have time. You know, I'm listening to music all day long while I work. And um, of course, when I'm at that night when we're just kicking back with the family, I'm not going to be watching Megadeth live on TV with my, with my wife who likes country music. So, <laughs> um, but regardless, I listen to music a lot, so I love listening to this kind of stuff. So. Uh, and this was just amazing. I wish, I wish I wouldn't have messed the video up because um, my, the expression on my face would have been priceless. Um, but I've been looking for this one since it came out last year. 2018 Record Store Day release. It is the only Motorhead 7-inch um, single that I haven't been able to snag from recent years. Uh, it just somehow got away from me. And it is the one year I actually did, I went out to California, went to Record Store Day at several stores, waited in line early in the morning to get in there. Dug through the seven inch bands, we just didn't find this one. Um, I went with Bill Bafford, neither one of us could find one. So, uh, and they disappeared quickly, and then suddenly they were going for pricey prices, <laughs> in the, especially in the United States. Uh, apparently, uh, most of the uh, copies were divvied around the um, around Europe and not in the U.S. So, really glad to have it. So, this is the Hero seven inch. Heroes, of course, being a David Bowie cover, and there's two different versions of it. I've only ever heard the the album version. Uh, the B side is the Wacken Family Chorus mix. Don't know what that is. I will definitely check that out soon. And then also the Mama's Boys waiting for a miracle seven-inch single. Love me some Mama's Boys. Irish heavy metal. By this point, they were no longer really heavy metal though. They're they were doing more of a uh, melodic AOR thing. Um, probably looking for you know hit singles and, and trying to survive financially. Uh, regardless, I like this album. It's just not quite as good as the early Mama's Boys albums, just because I like the rawer stuff they did at the beginning better than than this more polished '80s stuff. Along with that, we've got Mama's Boys waiting for a miracle. 12 inch. <laughs> uh, the difference between the 12 inch and the 7 inch. This has one more song. It has the um, of course waiting for a miracle on the A side. The B side, however, has the smaller 7-inch mix, which is 
this one. So there's a, there's a shorter version of it on here than there is on here. Um, but that version is also here, as well as um, the song Lightning Strikes, which is the B-side of the 7-inch single. So here's the uh, front and the back. You can kind of see a picture of the band back there, just looking like a band. Not really uh, glammy or anything, but definitely a, sh uh, a sh more commercial, um, polished sound than you would have got on the early Mama's Boys albums. And then along with that, there was also this in there. One of my favorite songs from the Mama's Boys, Midnight Promises, 12-inch single, uh, with Lonely Soul and High Energy Weekend, which is a song I believe was um, exclusive to this 12-inch single. And again, I don't own this, so I'm really happy to have it. Um, one of these days I'm going to do a Mama's Boys um, vinyl showcase because my Mama's Boys collection is probably just about full. <laughs> I think I have just about everything they put out. I'm still missing the original Pussy Records version of their first album, although I do have a repressing of it. So, uh, taken from the LP, turn it up. And uh, as with that album, Lee Jeans must have had a big, I don't know, must have gave them a lot of money or a lot of free jeans because their name is all over everything that came out with that particular album. And they're all wearing... If you look closely at the picture, they're all wearing denim Lee vests, uh, denim Lee jackets, denim Lee jeans, and dungarees. <laughs> um, so, and if I'm not mistaken, yep, you can even see inside of here, he's got a, uh, a red Lee jeans t-shirt on. So, this is another one that's really exciting to me because it was one that I've been after for a long time. Apparently, this album is really easy to find in the UK. It's very difficult to find in the US, um, but this is. Obnoxious by uh, UK Thrashers Acid Rain. This was the last album they did um, before just banning and then getting back together again uh, in more recent years. But uh, yeah, it's just straightforward thrash, not quite as jokey, punky as the first couple albums, but uh, more serious, more riff heavy. Uh, I think they were just trying to be taken, I don't know if they were trying to take more serious as a band or not. Um, the reason I said it is because that cover is terrible. <laughs> I'm not sure what was going on with that. Uh, obnoxious, yeah, that's an obnoxious cover, but actually bad. Uh, would have been better just for a black cover with a white logo than, than this pink and blue nightmare. Looks like something out of the, uh, I don't know, Pepto Bismol nightmare. But anyhow, uh, very glad to have it. Been wanting it for a long time. I didn't care if I got it on CD or vinyl or both, but glad to finally have it on vinyl format. Picture sleeve, picture of the band. It's kind of had to be what, early 90s, like 91 or so, 92 in that area. Before the, uh, let's see the year, before um, death metal just kind of took over and thrash metal kind of fell to the wayside for a while. Uh, 1990, yeah, and on the, on the one, under one flag label. Very, very cool. And finally, this is just awesome. <laughs> I was not expecting this, but so glad to have it. Eloy, I have, I just can never find anything from Eloy. Their stuff is it's really hard to find here. You don't ever run across it in the United States for some reason. I've been, I got a record show, it's record stores, just never see it. Um, of course, you could buy it online, but it's just not the same, <laughs> you know. But anyhow, this one was sent by, uh, by Steve. Very glad to have it. Love the cover art. This is the Rodney Matthews cover. Uh, one of my favorite fantasy artists. One of my favorite cover artists. He's done some great stuff for, I, can't, I mean, I probably named 10 bands top of my head. Um, Asia and Seventh Angel and Detritus, White Metal Warriors. Uh, there was just so many great covers. Uh, Nazareth. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but I have not actually ever heard this that particular album. Um, Want to know if Eloy is just three, four, prog rock. Uh, it's not heavy, it's not metal, even though this album is on the um, Heavy Metal Worldwide label. Yeah, this is not heavy metal. Um, I know a lot of metal fans like um, prog rock for some reason. I am, you know, my, me being one of them, always have, always liked it. I've always thought that bands like, you know, Genesis and Yes and Nectar and all those bands that I, I love so much, they kind of have a heavy undertone, even though I would never call it heavy metal. And that's the case for Eloy as well. So I'm very glad to have this beautiful album in my collection. So there you go. That's what came from Steve, uh, the Headbanging Zulu UK. Like I said, do check out his channel if you haven't already. I will leave a link so you can check that out. Appreciate y'all watching. God bless. Stay strong. 
Go Flyers!